Fourth letter of St. Clair to St. Agnes of Prague. To, the, to that illustrious queen, Agnes, spouse of the Lamb, the eternal king, the half of my soul and among all others, my most dear mother and favorite daughter as well. I, Claire, unworthy servant and useless handmaid of the handmaids living in the monastery of San Damiano in Assisi, send greetings along with the wish that Agnes, together with the rest of the most holy virgins before the throne of God, may sing a new song and follow the Lamb wheresoever he goes. O mother and daughter, spouse of the King of all ages, if I have not written as often as your heart and mine also would desire and yearn for, do not wonder about it, or believe for a minute that the fire of love for you in the inmost heart of your mother is burning in the least measure less sweetly. The difficulty is the lack of messengers, and the obvious dangers along the roads. But now, riding back to your love, I rejoice with you and exult with you in the joy of the Spirit, O Spouse of Christ, because, just like that other Most Holy Virgin, St. Agnes, you have put aside all the extravagant vanities of the world and been wondrously espoused to that spotless Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. O oh, happy for certain is she to whom it is given to share in this holy wedding feast, so that she may cling with her whole heart of hearts to him whose beauty all the blessed throngs of heaven admire unceasingly, whose affection suff suffuses one with light, whose contemplation refreshes one with new life, whose kindness fills one to the brim, whose sweetness continues to replenish, whose remembrance shines so sweetly, whose fragrance brings the dead back to life, whose glorious vision gives supreme happiness to all the citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem. Now, since he is, he is the splendor of everlasting glory, the brightness of eternal life, and the mirror without any smudge on it. Look into this mirror every day, O Queen, O Spouse of Jesus Christ, and in it continually study your own face reflected there, so that you may beautify yourself both inwardly and outwardly, with the blossoms of all the virtues, and with such garments as best become the daughter and most chaste bride of that Most High King. For from this mirror there shines forth blessed poverty, holy humility, and ineffable love, so that, by the grace of God, you can contem contemplate them in one sweeping gaze. Look attentively, then, at what is foremost in this mirror, the poverty of him who was laid down in a manger and wrapped in swaddling clothes. O oh, amazing humility, O oh, astounding poverty, the King of angels, the Lord of heaven and earth, is laid down in a manger. Then, in the center of the mirror, ponder the humility, and especially the blessed poverty, the countless labors and hardships which he endured for the redemption of the human race. And last of all, O oh, indeed, do well upon the ineffable love because of which he desired to suffer on the tree of the cross and to die on it, the most shameful kind of death. From that place, in that same mirror, positioned on the wood of the cross, he bade those passing by to ponder all this, saying, Oh, all you who pass by the way, pay close attention to these and see whether there is any sorrow like my sorrow. Lamentations one twelve. Let us then, with one voice and one spirit, answer him, who is crying out and lamenting. I shall indeed remember, and my soul will grow will grow faint within me. Lamentations three twenty. 
thus you will be the more mightily inflamed with the fire of love, O Queen of the Heavenly King. Contemplating yet the more his ineffable delights, the riches and the unending honors, and yearning after them in the great desire of your heart, may you cry out, Draw me after you. Let us run in the fragrance of your anointing oils, O heavenly spouse. I will run and not grow tired until you bring me into the cellar of wine until your left arm is under my head and your right happily embraces me and you kiss me with the most sweet kiss of your mouth. Song of Songs Resting in such contemplation, I hope you will be mindful of your poor little mother, knowing that I have inscribed your happy memory beyond erasure on the tablets of my heart holding you dearer than all others. One more to say, let the tongue of flesh be silent when it comes to speaking of my love for you, and let the tongue of the Spirit speak instead, O blessed daughter, since that tongue of flesh can no farther express the love I have for you, and what I have written is only the half of it. I beg you to receive kindly and lovingly what I have written, at least discovering in my words the motherly affection which I daily experience for you and your daughters, to whom I commend myself and my daughters in Christ. Oh, for certain, all of my daughters, and especially that most prudent Virgin Agnes, our sister, do indeed, and as earnestly as they possibly can, commend themselves in the Lord to you and your daughters. Goodbye then, dearest daughter, and farewell to your daughters there until we meet at the throne of glory of our great God. And do pray for us. I commend to your charity, as warmly as I can, our most dear brother Amato, beloved of God and of men, and brother Bonacura, the bearers of this letter to you. Amen. They shall exalt and dance for joy. Psalm 68